Well, hello everyone, happy new year, and uh, this year we'll start off with a brand new package I just got from Amazon. So I got this giant package coming in today, and I don't remember ordering anything that big, but um, my first clue was the lithium ion battery, you know, catching fire. What is this big box of electronics I got? So let's see what's in this big mess of, uh, of bags. Oh look, it's all air. Talk about chip bags. It's a real-time clock unit. So let's go ahead and have a look. So this particular unit that we have here is the DS2331 from uh, Switchdock Labs. Let's go ahead and open the tear tab here. Okay. Let's see what we have. So we have our uh, CR2032 3 volt lithium battery over here. I can leave that in for now, but that's basically what's going to keep our uh, time uh, counting, and that's the back of our board, of course. Have a couple mounting holes, and on the front is the business end. So. What we have here is, well, first of all, really horrible of them that they actually kind of scratch the top here, if you can see that. Um, but oh well, that's our uh, CR, uh, I mean our, um, what do you call it, DS2331 uh, actual clock, um, should be made by Maxim. Um, we have our breakout pins, and um, just some uh, basic passives, a power indicator LED, um, looks like a diode there. And we have um, another set of breakouts here. Now it does look like we can break this off, and uh, we can. So I don't know why this tab was still there, but uh, oh well. So, anyway, uh, we have a secondary chip here, so what is this? Well, this actually is a Atmel uh, 332 um, model 24C32N, so that's a 32-kilobyte uh, um, EEPROM chip. Um, which you can actually get through via the uh, 32K um, pin here, even though it's not advertised. Um, so that's a nice bonus. So um, let's go ahead and look at some of the data sheets and uh, online listing for this, shall we? So this is the actual Amazon product page for it. So it's the um, on the wrong page. Oops. It's the uh, Switch Doc Labs um, DS3231 uh, with AD, AT24C32E PROM battery and software. Uh, 669 um, with Prime. I needed it quick, so that's why I ordered through Prime. Um, this is kind of expensive, um, and obviously not the same packaging. But we can get a different brand with the exact same board here for uh, 49 cents from China. So that's something in my, um, to keep in mind if you're not um, in a hurry. But that's it and done. Kind of boring to look at the page, so let's look at the data sheets. So this is a Maxim part, of course. Um, it's a low-cost, extremely accurate, ice crystal real-time clock. It's got an integrated temperature compensated crystal oscillator, which is cool. Um, the device incorporates battery input, of course. Um, it's available in the commercial and industrial temperature ranges, 16-pin, 300ml SO package. Uh, maintains seconds, minutes, hours, days, date, month, and year information. It also compensates for months with fewer than 31 days. It does corrections for leap year, and you can do 24 or 12 hour format. It indicates AM, to AM PM. Um, and apparently it's got two programmable time of day alarms and a programmable square wave output. So um, on the board itself, we have a SQW reading there. So I'm assuming that's gonna be our uh, square, square wave um, generated output there. So we're gonna break out the um, oscilloscope and see what that does. Um, and the addresses and data are transferred serially through a nice squared C bidirectional bus. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any mention, there's probably going to be mention of it later, but what we have at the bottom here, and actually let's switch to a, uh, to a full view, is we have an A0, A1, and A2 selector here, so we can actually bridge these, um, these little connections here, and that's going to allow us to change the um, I squared C um, address of the device. By default, um, I believe it's uh, 0x57. So uh, it's, uh, it's good to know. Uh, in case you have uh, multiple I2C devices on the same bus, you don't want them to have the same address. Um, so back to this. Uh, temperature range for the commercial part we have is 0 to 70 C, which should be fine. I really wish it would go a little less than 0 degrees, but it probably will work anyway. Um, we have 3.3 volt operation here, and the input range is actually 2.3 volts to 5.5 volts, so that's great if you have a um, 3.3 volt device or a normal 5 volt device. Uh, the same thing for the uh, logic level, which is very um, sort of, um, it's got a wide range. 
so it goes up to 5.8 volts or so you can do the maximum and then quite low 1 point something um, volts uh, so this is going to work both with a um, AVR uh, based Arduino which works at 5 volts or with something like the Raspberry Pi or a um, an Arduino Due is what we're going to test it with um, which is of course is a 3.3 volt part uh, which is not 5 volt tolerant so that's important to us and um, what's great about this um, clock unit here, this RTC, is that we can also get a digital temperature sensor output, which is within 3 degrees C of accuracy, which is not great. Um, and this, of course, comes from the, from the um, integrated uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillator. But it's good enough for sort of general um, ambient temperature readings and such. And uh, for my project, which is just going to be... Um, so you get a general idea of what the temperature is like in the room. This is perfect, so we don't have to use a, an external sensor. But of course, uh, that is up to you. It's just one nice way of removing more complexity. And then finally, we have the two-wire serial EEPROM 32K version, which is on the, uh, on the chip here. It's a smaller pin, a smaller um, package there. And um, yeah, it's just an Admel part. Nothing really special about it, but again, um, it's uh, 2.7 to 5.5 volts or 1.8 to 5.5 volts, whichever version it is, will work fine with our 3.3 uh, volt or 5 volt logic level devices. Um, and um, this is actually fantastic because if um, you've ever used uh, the new um, ARM-based Arduinos, you'll know that the Due, for example, does not have any built-in EEPROM memory. It's only got flash. So there's no way of really storing um, parameters that you'll, you can sort of save on the board um, as you go. And this will allow me to save a bunch of settings um, through software, which is great. So we're going to try to do that. Um, so let's go and have a look at some of the um, Arduino software for this. So I've gone ahead and connected the uh, real-time clock unit here to our Arduino Mega. And for this demo, we only need four pins. So the ones I have attached on here that are actually connected to the board, um, we can see here are uh, ground, VCC, uh, serial data out, and serial clock for the... Um, Two pin I squared C interface, obviously. Uh, I don't know why this. I see 920 is so annoying at focusing. Um, but yeah, you can see it basically on the Due. I mean, on the uh, Mega here, I have it connected to 5 volts for VCC. Ground is ground. And then the two um, bottom pins here, which are used for, um, you can see marked SDA and SEL. That's pin 20 and 21 there. Um, and of course, we don't need to attach the um, EEPROM or the square wave generator for now. Um, if you're going to use this on a Dewey uh, or another Arduino, you could also connect to 3.3 volts and uh, it would work just fine. So right now, let's go ahead and power our Arduino. And uh, we can see our LED lights up there. And now, let's go ahead and um, look at the Arduino software here. So for this uh, example, I'm using a library called the uh, Sodak uh, DS3231, uh, which is actually available through the um, Arduino sketch repository thing that is now available if you go to um, sketch, um, include library, manage libraries. Um, it's part of this list. Anyway, so um, First, let's look at the uh, the now feature. So I actually uh, went ahead before filming this and set the uh, current time. Um, so if we upload the sketch, and um, we open our serial monitor, um, 57600 baud, same as the software, and we see um, it's reading our second since uh, Unix epoch time, uh, as well as our current date and time. Um, it's telling us it's Friday. Now the, the time is more or less correct. I set this when it was um, 5.36. Uh, it's 5.42 now actually. Um, but we can see that it is counting uh, correctly. And um, if we remove power, which we're gonna remove right now, but of course not the battery for the real-time clock, we see that the last time this was reading was 5.37.10. Um, so now if we plug it in again, and open the serial monitor, we see that it's 5.37.23 uh, and counting up so that uh, so we know our time is still being kept, which is great. But of course the unit did not come pre-programmed with time. Uh, the chip would read uh, 2000, um, first date, first month. So um, the way we set up the time is there's a separate sketch uh, included with the library called um, adjust. 
and this will basically let us set up um, this value here. Um, so DT, um, month, date, hour, minute, second, weekday. Uh, so we have 2016, first month, first day. Um, we have the fifth hour, we can set up for the for third minute now. And um, zero of second. And then the last unit here is our weekday, and we start counting from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's a Friday, so we put five for the last one. And we simply hit upload. And we can check that our time here is being read correctly, obviously. Um, now, the one thing to remember is that we now want to upload the now sketch again because um, the adjust sketch will actually readjust the time every time that the Arduino runs, so we don't want that. So now that we upload it now, we can go ahead and read uh, the time correctly once again. So I'm going to take a brief break here and next we'll look at the uh, temperature uh, features of this and then uh, the uh, EEPROM. Alright, so another reason for uh, which I was using the SODAC library is because it supports um, temperature reading from the uh, internal oscillator. So um, nothing's changed, we still only have those four pins set up as before. Um, and what we're going to do now is um, we open the temperature sketch, including the library, so that's file, um, examples, uh, SODAC library, and uh, temperature. And um, we see it's just, um, it's a function called rtc.getTemperature that actually gets called, and um, rtc.convertTemperature um, before, which converts the current temperature into registers, okay. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and upload this and see what happens. So now if we read the serial monitor, we can see the room is at 26 degrees. Um, and if I go ahead and put my finger on the actual clock, we see it's warming up. If I release it, 29 degrees, it's going back down to uh, room temperature, which is uh, around uh, 26 degrees. And uh, I'm actually gonna move back uh, one second here, and uh, let's get my um, little laser thermometer. Um, Let's go ahead and sort of read the clock here. So we're reading uh, 26.4 uh, degrees Celsius here on the chip. So I'm gonna get another reading. There we go, 26.2 or there above. You can actually focus. Um, and we're reading 26.75. So um, we're actually within half a degree, which is uh, great. That's uh, temperature. So thank you for watching my video on the DS3231. Uh, I decided that the square wave functions as well as the uh, 32K of uh, EEPROM um, should be in a separate video just because um, realistically speaking most people aren't going to be uh, needing to do that. Uh, so um, I will do one video on the uh, one short video on the square wave functions of the DS3231 uh, and a longer video probably on the uh, use of external and internal EEPROM um, using Arduinos. Um, so that should be a very interesting video on its own, and that way I can go into more depth without boring everyone to death. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, um, so stay tuned for the other videos.